Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here and welcome to the gift series of the season because as you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year and I absolutely love making handmade gifts for my friends, family, my loved ones and people that matter the most to us in our lives. So this year you can expect five videos in the series and each one of them is going to be dedicated to making beautiful, thoughtful, handmade gifts. And we're going to start with a project that is small but mighty. And at first glance, it might look like a brain puzzle, but once you put it all together, it creates a beautiful little basket like this one. Now, needless to say that you can actually make it any size that you would like. You can make it big or small, like you see right over here. You can make it short or really tall. It's totally up to you. I will explain step by step what to do. But the real beauty about these is that you can actually make them on the sewing machine or completely by hand. And I think that you can agree that sometimes holidays are a time of really high stress, really high anxiety. Everything is like, go, 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 quick, quick, quick. So maybe a slow stitching project like that could not only create something beautiful for a loved one, but also help you center yourself, maybe find that peace and quiet even just for a little bit and find that beauty of handmade. Now for this project, you don't need much. I will be using fusible fleece, but you can also use batting if you have or any other fusible interfacing. The goal here is to add structure to your little basket. Then of course comes the fabric. You can use little fabric scraps of woven fabrics like cotton or or linen or anything else or you can buy fresh yardage specifically for the season that you're creating this for. And then let's see if you're doing it by hand you will need hand sewing needle and thread and if you're doing it on a sewing machine a sewing machine and that's it we're ready to get started. Now each basket consists from little squares and a handle so it's really easy and straightforward. Right now we're going to be making this small size and here for the sides we will need eight rectangles and you can see the measurements on your screens. The bigger rectangle is going to be for the fabric itself and the smaller one is going to be for your fusible interfacing. We will need to cut eight of each. Then we will need to cut the bottom. Here we will need to cut one of each. Again, the bigger one is going to be for the fabric and a smaller one is going to be for the fusible interfacing. And of course you can vary these measurements depending on how big or small of a project you want to complete. Now before we move any further, I also want to give credit because I originally saw this idea for a basket in this sort of like a DIY homemaking encyclopedia that I had since I was a kid. Now I did try to follow the directions given for this project in the book and perhaps there was a typo or maybe something on my end, but it didn't work out. So I took the basic principle and the basic idea sort of problem solved and made it easier on myself so that way it would make more sense. But I definitely wanted to mention that the original idea came from this book and I will leave the author and the publishing house in the description of this video. We have our fabrics cut out. Here as you can see are my fabric pieces and here are my interfacing pieces. And for the little handle, the piece for the fabric is about two and a half inches wide and 13 inches long and piece for the interfacing is 5 eighths of an inch wide and also 13 inches long. So first we have to fuse the interfacing to the fabric pieces. prepare my little squares, the bottom and the handle. I will grab one of the little squares and as you can see the interfacing is smaller than the fabric itself. So I'm going to fold one of the edges down. It doesn't really matter which one you start with. And then with a knot tied at the end of my thread and here I decided to switch to the red thread so that way you can see a little bit better. I'm going to use a whip stitch in order to secure this little edge uh, and form that little square that we need. I'm only picking up just a tiny bit of the lining here with without actually picking up the other side of the fabric. So these stitches are not uh, going to be visible on the other side. And we're going to continue all the way to this corner. Once I have just about reached the corner, I usually like to flip it around, fold the next side in, and using exactly the same technique of a whip stitch, secure it all the way up till here. Again, fold in the next side and continue until all of the edges have been secured and you have a perfect little square. Now 
let's go ahead and take a look how you can do nearly the same thing on a sewing machine. What I like to do is to fold one of the edges down and then place a little square right side up underneath the presser foot and start stitching close to the edge with a straight stitch. Once you have reached the corner of the interfacing, so not of the fabric itself but of the interfacing, go ahead and fold the other side down, pivot the square and again stitch close to the edge all the way down. You're going to repeat that for all four sides. At the end you will get a little frame around your square but you might find this method a little bit faster than doing it by hand. So try it and see what works for you. Now we're going to repeat the same steps for all of the small squares and for the one big square as well. Now the steps for the handle are going to be slightly different. Here I like to fold in one of the edges just flat as is and the other one right on top of it. However, we need to hide the raw edge so go ahead and tuck it in just by about maybe a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. And now we're going to secure it with the same whip stitch. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put this all together. The big square goes right in the middle. Then I will place a white square on each of the corners and then I will place a one blue square on top of each. Now with a hand sewing needle and thread, let's start on this side first. Place the small square and the big square right sides together, align them at the corner and with the same whip stitch but this time we're going to be connecting two layers together. So I usually like to start in the corner and get my knot right in there. And now with a whip stitch that only catches a couple of threads of one square and the other, we're going to attach it. And now when you open this up, it's going to look like so. Now using exactly the same technique, we're going to attach all of the white squares to the big square and then all of the blue ones to the small white ones. If you would like to repeat the same procedure but on the sewing machine, what you can do is use a very shallow zigzag stitch and stitch these two right sides together on the very very edge and that will produce exactly the same result. All right, once all the little squares are attached, from the wrong side you will have something that looks like this and from the right side something that resembles this. Now we have to put this all together in order to form a little box. Let's go ahead and take this part and fold it down and you want to align your blue rectangle with the white one. So let's go ahead, fold it down, bring it in and if I pick it up you will see that the blue one meets the side of the white one and then the white one is meeting the other side of the large blue square. So now using the same whip stitch as we did connecting these little squares together, we're going to connect it right over here, one square and another square all the way. Once I have completed this seam, if I poke out the corner and if I turn it right side out, you will see the bottom of our little basket starting to form. Now I have to complete the rest of the three sides. So what I'm going to do is, starting at this side, I'm going to fold it over, again, blue square onto the white square, like this, and I will repeat the same process for the remaining two seams. Are you ready for this? It might not look like much but the base of the basket is actually done. So if we turn out the corners, ta-da! Look at that! How cute! Okay, now we're moving on to one of the last parts and that is to create a lining for the inside of our basket. And here you can go two ways. Number one, you can use exactly the same principle as we did for the outside of the basket minus the interfacing because that way your lining isn't going to be thick 
or create extra bulk for your basket. The second option I think is a little bit faster and let me show you how to do that. When done, our lining piece is going to look like this. For that, go ahead and grab your little basket and as you can see, the bottom is a square. Go ahead and measure that. In our case, it's going to be a square where each side is two inches and three quarters long or seven centimeters. This is going to be the bottom of our lining. Each side is going to look like so. As you can tell, it's also a square. So the measurement for the square here is going to be exactly the same as on the bottom, two inches and three quarters or seven centimeters long. And for this little bit, it's going to be half of that. So 3.5 centimeters or just about one inch and three eighths. If you're doing your own measurements for the basket and you're trying to figure out how to build your lining, basically you're just going to measure from here all the way down and from here all the way down. So like this and like this, and that's what's going to create your side. Don't forget that you will need to add seam allowances for your lining piece so that way we can sew it up together. And the seam allowances are going to be added on the sides only since the bottom doesn't need a seam allowance. Seam allowances that I have marked here in orange are about 3 eighths of an inch. So now to put the lining together, let's go ahead and grab it, place it right sides together, and sew the side seams right over here at 3 eighths of an inch. And we're going to repeat that on all four seams. Now if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so, so much and thank you for being here. And you do have these little templates available as a part of your membership on Google Drive. Now of course these are just a rectangle, so it's real easy and straightforward to make your own these are just for the convenience. Take a look at what we have here. So now it looks like a little lining for our basket and it's gonna go inside just like this. But before we actually attach it, we need to take our handle and place it inside. And with a whip stitch, we need to secure it to the interfacing on one side and on the other side. So that way it stays in place while we attach the lining. Now, if you would like, you can press the seam allowances of the lining to the wrong side of the fabric, but I just like to leave it as is and navigate it as I go. So now let's go ahead and place it inside like this. Make sure that all of the corners are inside all of the corners. So the corners of the basket and the corners of the lining match. And now I simply fold in the seam allowance so that way the corners and the peaks of the uh, little squares align like this. And with the same whip stitch, I just make my way from one to another side and I repeat the same here, just fold it in, make sure that the edges of the squares match. And again, with the whip stitch, make it all the way. Take a look at this larger basket that I made using exactly the same principle. The idea here is very simple. You just want to make sure that the large rectangle that you have cut for the bottom can yield even amounts of the small rectangles that you're going to be cutting for the sides. And that's it. There you got it. Small or big, beautiful little basket made from remnants or beautiful fabric for any occasion. Thank you so, so much for watching. And here are 10 more really awesome stocking stuff for ideas that I think you're going to love. And until next time, happy, thoughtful holiday sewing. I'll see you very soon. Bye!